Hi, and welcome to another episode of Legislative Report. I'm your state representative, Ryan McKenzie. Today, we're visiting the Lower McCungee Township Historical Center, and I'm joined by Sarah Jane Williams, the president, and Ann Bartholomew, who's the vice president. We're at the Bartholomew Center for the Preservation of Lower McCungee Township History, and it's a great opportunity for us to be here and learn more about our community. So thanks for joining us, Sarah Jane and Ann. Appreciate the opportunity to be here and speak with you today. Thank you for coming. Absolutely. Well, let's start. Can you just tell us a little bit about the history of Lower Mukunji? Oh, well, I'll start because I've been around longer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, back in the bicentennial, we did a history book about Lower Mukunji Township history, and uh, my husband and I were the primary authors, and we were able to speak with probably the last generation that could remember what it was like when people were actively farming. We had many discussions with those people. We found some little tidbits of history that uh, make us different from most of the other municipalities around here. We certainly had the strong farming background. The uh, churches were comparable to those that were established other places. But we had more iron mines developed in this township than any other township in the Lehigh Valley. And that what make, it, it makes the soils very difficult for some people because there's clay deposits all around mm. where the uh, clay was washed off the ore. Uh, but that does distinguish us uh, from most of the other townships and uh, and areas throughout the throughout the valley, the Lehigh Valley. And now, the first people that settled in Lower Mukunji was it because of the the iron, or was no. it the agriculture? What brought them here initially? They were Germans, Pennsylvania Germans, um, who were looking for fertile soils. What you needed in order to establish a good farm was not just fertile soils, but you had to have some timber, and you had to have fresh water because uh, you, you had livestock that had to drink water. Maybe your people weren't going to drink water so much as um, probably safer beverages mm -hmm. and eventually cider. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, yeah, they were looking for water and soils that would um, grow the same kinds of crops that they had been growing in, uh, in, in Germany. And it wasn't Germany then, of course. It was just a series of principalities that became Germany. Um, but um, they were very good farmers. They knew their skills and they wanted to be able to pursue them here. Terrific. And now at that time of the formation of Lower Mukunji Township, what else was in the area? What, what would people in the day been surrounded by? Well, you have to remember this was all part of a part of uh, Pennsylvania that wasn't divided into municipalities as early as uh, most of them came through. Um, they, timber was very important to them. Um, the churches were established early, that was important to them. Families would come as groups. Uh, there would be uh, some possibility for education. Uh, sometimes the minister would be uh, able to teach children for a fee, obviously. It wasn't free education until the 1830s. Uh, but um, they found everything that they really needed to live isolated primarily. Uh, they, um, they didn't form villages. Um, the villages evolved as, um, well, mills usually were always were placed along a creek, but villages would be along a major highway where services could be reached. Um, when I say a major highway, don't let anybody be uh, fooled. It wasn't what we think of today <laughs> as a major highway. It was just a track sure. that was leveled off and Great. Uh, they could take their wagons. Great. Well, obviously some fantastic history here in Lower Mukunji, so it's great that we're able to preserve that. So Sarah Jane, tell me a little bit about the Historical Society and, and what, you, what you do with this organization. Well, the Historical Society was founded in 1989 after a group of uh, concerned citizens rescued a uh, log house from being demolished. And it was um, uh, moved to the uh, West Coastville Park, what is now the West Coastville Park, and it was located originally near Hunan Springs in the back of the earth. So uh, out of that effort, uh, the Historical Society was founded, and we still have founding board members uh, on the board today. So they've served for over 25 years, like Ann and Craig, and, and uh, quite a few others. And so we're very grateful to have their wisdom and enthusiasm. They restored the log house um, all through a volunteer effort. Terrific. And we are now at the Bartholomew Center. Tell us a little bit about this new location that you have. Well, we had uh, a room in the township building for many years. And uh, when we put together a budget to renovate a space for 
um, creating a museum, they decided this was a, a better space because the bathrooms were already here. And uh, so the township was very generous and paid for the remodeling of the, the space for us. Terrific. Well, we're going to see a couple different exhibitions that you have started here today. Uh, agriculture, also what domestic life would have been like in, in earlier times in Lower Mukunji. And we also have some other displays that are in process uh, for veterans and all different other types of industry, things that are really important to the preservation of, of our histor history here in Lower Mukunji. So thank you for that. And what, what's the first display that you want to show us? Let's go to agriculture. All right, let's go check it out. Okay. All right, well, Sarah, Jane, and Anne, we are now at the agriculture display, one of the most important industries for our township's history. Tell us a little bit about that history and, and what we see here. It, at first, it was general farming. They had um, different forms of livestock that they would keep in their very cozy barns, except for the pigs. Pigs ran wild, always ran wild. Um, and. Uh, they would grow the grains that were needed for the family and for feeding the animals. And their cash crop would have been wheat, which they mm. wouldn't have eaten themselves, but they would have transported it in uh, caravans of farmers down to Philadelphia. Okay. You know, on the King's Highway that went through Mukunji, down through Upper Milford and so forth, that headed straight down there, where they would pick up commodities after they sold their goods for their wives. So their wives would have a few minor luxuries. Um, butter, dairy of different kinds, um, eggs were all important. Now in the 20th century, in the late 19th and the early 20th century, uh, potatoes started to become extremely important. There was a local mill that wanted high quality wheat and in order to get white, really good uh, white flour, uh, the wheat had to have been grown in fields where, and I don't really understand it, but the, uh, the fertilization that was given to the potatoes made the wheat grow better hmm. the following okay. year. Um, they followed a, a crop, a crop rotation, rotation primarily sure. to uh, benefit the wheat, but it resulted in a massive explosion in potato farming. And we had, in fact, the largest potato dealer in the whole Lehigh Valley living here in Lower Mukunji Township, oh, Mr. Wow. Kratzer, whose farm is now preserved by the township. Um, and then uh, later on, it became more specialized. Uh, the seam seed farm in Upper Milford required high quality seeds of all kinds of small grains and a lot of farmers grew specifically for them. And then um, it became very much reduced. Uh, it became corn and soybeans pretty much exclusively and uh, that's the two main crops that you see today. Great. So some of the items that are on display here, we have uh, a corn uh, a corn deep, sheller. A corn sheller, okay, which is a new item for me, but that's a very interesting piece. Mm -hmm. And um, we have this wonderful wagon. Tell us a little bit about this wagon. You can do that. Well, the wagon uh, is a farm wagon that actually was given to the township and they gave it to us. But there were wagon makers in Mukunji and uh, Alberta. So this, is, this one we believe is a Gruber wagon. Okay, uh, sure. But um, it's a, it represents the type of wagons that were very, very important to our, our ancestors. Absolutely. So in this display, we also have uh, some mink pieces. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, th this is a mink. <laughs> and there were mink farms actually in Lower Mukunji and actually a chinchilla farm as well. And um, this, you might, if you've ever seen one of these, my grandmother and my mother actually wore this around her neck. This was very popular like in the 19, early <laughs> 1900s. And mm -hmm. it was a, instead of a fur coat, they sure. would have this wrap. But <laughs> yeah, well, isn't that something that there, that was uh, one of the industries here in Lower Mukunji was a mink farm. So fascinating what you can learn by coming here to the Bartholomew Center. So that's great. And coupled with this display is also industry. So agriculture and industry. Industry is a very important, important part of the history as well. So tell us a little bit about the industry here. Well, after 1840, when there started to be iron furnaces built um, using anthracite for their fuel, they were high output, very high output furnaces. And they needed a lot of materials, obviously. The anthracite was the best fuel that anybody had come up with. But there was iron ore all around um, in these uh, limestone soils. And we also had limestone quarries. You needed limestone for flux. So those two entities, limestone and, um, 
and ores, limonite ores and magnetic ores on the mountain were excavated in Lower Makanji Township in vast quantities hmm. and then taken either to the railroad to be transferred uh, to furnaces down the line or used in the local furnaces. Great. It was a major industry. Absolutely. And every farm, we're told, except three, had at least one iron ore pit on it. No kidding. Okay. No kidding. Yeah. Great. Well, that's fantastic. And again, just a tremendous amount of information that you're sharing with us here today. We're going to go see one more display. And so what are we going to see next? We'll look at the domestic side of life. Okay. Sounds great. Let's go check it out. Right. All right, well, the final display that we're going to look at relates to domestic life in early Lower Mukunji. And Sarah Jane, tell us a little bit about the pieces that you have here in this section of the museum. We have a beautiful quilt that was made in Lower Mukunji. That's a very unusual applique quilt. Um, we also have a dress that is from the 1920s that was donated to us. And a lot of uh, unusual items or people, things that people would think are unusual today, but they were part of every woman's uh, uh, desktop at that time. Okay. Uh, we have some irons and lace, tatted lace collars and doilies and all types of things like that. We have some Berlin work that was made by some local girls um, as an educational project. Um, and we also have Santa Claus in the background and uh, we're going to be featuring some signage about the local traditions and most of our American holidays originated here in Pennsylvania. Mm. Well, so the Ber Berlin work and some of the other things, the crafts are, it's just fantastic. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful and we're really glad that you're able to preserve it here. Where do you come across items like this? Where do they come from? Donations. Uh, the first one was given uh, by a woman who had found it, I think at an auction okay. and gave it to us. Another one was given to us by another museum. Uh, they didn't need it there. They had other samples that were better. And one of them is actually just um, a photograph of mm -hmm. a sampler that was restored and we, we couldn't retain it, unfortunately, so the, uh, the owner sent us a photograph. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so all different sources of, mm -hmm. of, uh, for these items, so that's great. And if people want to make donations of items that they feel uh, really represent the history, how do they do that? How do they get in touch with you to to talk about items that they might want to donate to the museum? Well, normally they contact us through our website. Okay. There's a, a link on there so that they can send an email directly. Or they can, if they know our email address, which we publicize widely, it's um, lmthistory at yahoo.com, uh, they can do it that way. Either way works well. Great. Okay. Well, we'll put the website information on the screen here uh, so that people can look into possibly donating items and also visiting as well because not only is the museum open in uh, certain hours but by appointment, you also have a series of different events that you do throughout the year. We have um, lectures that are offered in spring and fall. We have events at the log house like Christmas at the log house, spring planting, fall harvest. Um, we also have a veterans program and uh, that's usually held the Sunday closest to Veterans Day at the community center. Um, so we have a variety of topics Absolutely. that are, are covered. And we also publish a newsletter that is, uh, comes out at least two times a year which, with a lot of um, nice information. Well, that's fantastic. You do have a great variety of programs that you put on throughout the year. I know I and others in the local community really enjoy all the work that you do for us. So thank you very much for everything you do. Uh, to preserve the history and, and also make Lower Mukunji just a, a nice place to live. So we really want to thank you for that. Okay. All right. Well, with that, uh, we're going to close this episode of Legislative Report. Today we had a fantastic visit with Sarah Jane and also Anne here at the Bartholomew Center. It's a terrific opportunity for anybody in the area to come see Lower Mukunji history and learn about our early beginnings. Thank you, and join us again for another episode of Legislative Report. I'm your state representative, Ryan McKenzie.